Hi everyone, what you just saw was another experiment using EV inside of Blender 2.8. For the rest of this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the techniques used to make this content. But before we jump into it, you can get your hands on all of the files used to make this short from the link in the description. Unfortunately, the file size of the content is too large to fit within the free product size limits on Gumroad, so I've had to put it out for the higher price of $1. What you get in the package is all of the blend files used to make the footage, a detailed spaceship model, sci-fi props, as well as a rigged and textured character model, and all of that is yours for $1. So let's take a look at the files. If you open them up and go into rendered mode, you will immediately see the results start to appear. One thing to note about these scenes is that they have actually been created on a much smaller scale than what you would typically see for Blender scenes. This is quite apparent if you place down a default cube. This, combined with the dense volumetrics, means that it's quite easy to get lost. But just remember that you can press numpad 0 to return to the camera view if you can't find your way back. During the animation, the cameras have a slight random rotation to them just to add the feeling of loose movement. This is done by adding a noise modifier in the graph editor. If you go to the graph editor with the camera selected, you will see all of the animation points represented as curves. We can select one of the Euler rotation values on the left, and then add and change modifiers in the right toolbar. This toolbar is accessible by pressing the N key. Here you will see a tab called Modifiers, and in here is where you will see the added noise modifier. The same values are used for each of the rotational axes, which are a high scale value with a low strength value. This will give a slow wavy effect as the timeline progresses. You can probably notice quite an obvious use of particle systems for all of these floating details scattered around the scene. There are two of these systems used for the smaller details, one for the darker pieces of junk, and another for the glowing spheres. I like the way these minor particle systems can sell a sense of depth when the camera is translating through the scene. One thing you always need to keep in mind is the lifetime value in the particle settings. If your particles are unchanging throughout the timeline, then it needs to be long enough to include all the frames you want to render. As well as this, an easy way to stop particles from changing is to set the frame star and end values to zero. The particle system in Blender will be undergoing some massive improvements in the not too distant future, so these values may not be entirely relevant to following updates. In the compositor, you will see the files are making use of the Lens Distortion node. This is an effect that's quite often overused, but I think it works really well with these strong atmospheric silhouettes and particle systems, because it produces an artificial blur that helps with the sense of motion even on still frames. The props are mostly hard surface objects, and I made heavy use of the hard ops add-on while piecing these together. When I showed some work in progress images to our Discord community, someone asked me how to make these tiling hexagon patterns. It's actually very simple to do using basic primitives. If you go to create a cylinder object, you can just set the vertex count to 6 in the operator parameters, and that will automatically create a hexagonal cylinder for you. You can scale this down on the z-axis as much as you like. Then I use an array modifier to repeat the object in one direction. To get the interlocking pattern, I duplicate this object and line it up diagonally with the original object. Then what we can do is add a second array modifier to each of these objects along the next axis to repeat the pattern sideways. This way you can start building grids of these tileable patterns that can be as large as you like. All of these detailed prop objects are improvised, and every time I return to this file to get some more modeling done, I separate the sessions into different collections. This new collection system is fantastic for organizing scatterbrained ideas like this, and I much prefer it to the limited layer system in previous versions of Blender. Going back to the rendered imagery, we're going to talk about stylistic choices. One of the reasons for making this short was to continue experimenting with the vibrant silhouette style that I've often employed in previous videos and pieces of artwork. And one of the main concepts behind this style is to see how much you can do visually with as little data as possible. For example, there's only one textured object in this entire short, which is the floating dude in a spacesuit. The particle systems are only instancing very simple objects, in this case a simple sphere for the emissive elements and an L-shaped object for the floating debris. Another particle system is used for the asteroids, but it's only using one object with rotational deviations. And just to add some extra fun, I've hidden a little puzzle inside of the footage. You will know what to do if you manage to solve it, the only clue I'm going to give you is the code IP16. People who are familiar with my previous work on ARGs might have an upper hand, but we'll see who manages to solve it first. So thanks for watching this video, don't forget to pick up a copy of the resources so you can play around with it for yourself. If you make something cool, don't forget to tag me in your work, because I love seeing everything you make. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on the social media channels and join our Discord server to get previews and upcoming content. And if you feel like giving more to the channel, you can also sign up for the Patreon. I'll be sharing some behind the scenes blogs on there from time to time. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.